Joan, what are you doing here? Morning, Betty. Is John Rhodes in yet? Here a minute early. He passes here at 9.25 on the dot. <laughs> I didn't see you at the Bennetts last night. Uh, no, we were rather tired. Is Desmond all right? Yes, of course. He's fine. Only I haven't seen him about lately. Well, he's been up to the eyes, you know. Oh, poor dear. He's such a pet. Here he is. Mr. Rhodes, Mrs. Pearson is here to see you. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Pearson. Good morning, Betty. And how's dear Desmond? All right, thank you. Well, what can we do for you? I have just a minute or two before I'm due in with the ambassador. Uh, can we go into your office? Yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, do sit down, Mrs. Pearson. Ah, I uh, hope it's nothing serious. It's Desmond. He hasn't been home for almost a fortnight. Oh. Well, I don't quite see how we can help you. But I haven't any idea where he is. I'm sure he'll turn up. He usually does. What do you mean by that? Well, he travels quite a lot for his firm. Naturally, we'd like to help, but... Uh, I think you should. Desmond's rather an independent character. He might not like us prying into his business affairs. Look at these. But they're from Desmond. I thought you said you didn't know where he was. I don't. Each telegram was sent from a different town. But he's been keeping in touch. I really don't see why you're so worried. I don't think he sent them. It's unlike him. He always writes. He never sends telegrams. Hmm. Well, if there's no news in a day or two, we'll make some inquiries. Now, if you'll excuse me, I mustn't keep the master waiting. But there must be something wrong. He's never left Prague without telling me. I really don't think you need to worry, Mrs. Pearson. I'm sure we'll be seeing you both at the reception on Saturday. Good morning, John. Sorry I'm late, sir. Oh, are you? I couldn't get away from that tiresome Mrs. Pearson. Well, what's Desmond been up to, then? He's gone AWOL, sir, nearly a fortnight now. I'd like your advice on this trade mission application, sir. Oh. Hasn't she heard from him, then? She said four telegrams, but she thinks he didn't send them. All these marital problems. Mm. Right, leave this file with me, will you? John will have a word later in the day. Oh, as you wish, sir. Hello? Come in, Simon, will you? Right away. Make a signal to London, in code M9. Just in case they're not aware that one of their men is missing. Desmond Pearson. Are you British? Very much so, old chap. I've had a spot of bother. My taxi's broken down. Could you possibly give me a lift to the nearest taxi rank in Prague? Sure, sure. Jump in. I have a couple of bags. Do you mind? Not at all. Thank you. Well, Drake, welcome to Prague. Thank you, sir. Actually, it's Stuart. Terence Stewart. I sometimes wonder if you chaps ever know who you really are. <laughs> sometimes wonder ourselves. Uh, what's the latest news on Pearson? Not a thing. There's nothing to show he's been arrested, either. Mm, 
two weeks missing in Czechoslovakia doesn't leave much alternative, does it? His wife, poor soul, is nearly out of our mind with worry. I press the authorities here, but they know nothing. They never do. The first we ever know is when they come up for trial, if you can call it a trial. He may be lying low, but I can't think why he should. You realize that he was on to one of our best sources of information we've had behind the curtain. You know him, then? Well, yes, no, I've had my briefing. If they've pulled him in, we've had it. He'll have talked. Yeah. Pity. You probably know the source, uh, a minister, Josef Redl. Redl? Yeah. Well, I never. Cash or by conviction? Neither. Indiscretion. Oh, what's her name? Ira Frankel, one of the most expensive young ladies in Prague, isn't she? Maybe, Stuart. I really wouldn't know about these things. She may still be a bargain to us. No, I wonder they didn't send you out here as a member of his firm to look into things. Would have been a very good cover. I, I trust that uh, no one at your embassy's ever met him. No, we made sure of that. By the way, you know Stuart's background? Yeah, tall, fair, 34, until three days ago, a member of our embassy in Uruguay. He's one of our horizontal heroes, couldn't keep off the bottle. So you have quite a reputation to live up to, haven't you? <laughs> My stomach has. <laughs> oh, by the way, sir, I'd like the opposition to know about this uh, weakness of mine as soon as possible. They'll be falling over each other to meet you. I'll see to that. All I have to do is pass your personal file across a certain desk in this embassy. Now, is this the steward file, Miss Cross? Yes, Mr. Rhodes. Oh, good. Then send him in. Yes. May I come in? Terence Stewart, sir. I can see that. You've had rather a lot of postings these past few years. Yes, I, I do get about. It's one of the attractions of the service, sir. Now, let's see. This is your first time behind the curtain. We have to be much more circumspect in these parts. I, for one, will not tolerate any of these sorts of embarrassments. Yes, I appreciate that, sir. Good. Well, you'll have the weekend to settle in. We've an embassy party tonight. We'd like to see you there. Certainly, sir. Till seven, then. Your name, sir? Stewart. Terence Stewart. Mr. Terence Stewart! Ah, oh, Stewart. You're the new man. Yes, sir. I hope you'll be happy here. Any problems, let me know. Thank you very much, sir. Evening. Doctor and Frau Peter Lotzbeer. Oh, glad to see you made it. Mr. and oh, Mrs. Robert oh, no, Nielsen. You. Look, we don't expect you to remain totally dry. Come, have one. No harm in one. Oh, if you absolutely twist my arm, um, dry ginger, please. Are you quite sure? No, I'm a reformed character. Dry ginger, please. Mrs. Desmond Pearson. Good evening. We're doing all we can, my dear. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Pani, Pani. Good evening, Lady Good evening. <laughs> Monsieur and Madame Walter Prosim. Lamprey. Joan, I'm so terribly sorry to hear about Desmond. Desmond? You must not bottle this up. You must confide in your friends. We all want to help you. You know that. But Desmond's only away on business. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Sir George and Lady Whitelock. Well, who's the handsome lad with Mrs. Pearson? You know him. Milos Keldor, you mean. I didn't know you knew Mrs. Pearson. I don't. I just heard her announced. Uh, she should interest you, Stuart. Her husband's vanished. So Hartley wants you to look into it. And what about Calbor? Well, he's an advisor on cultural relations. I should steer well clear of him if I were you. Unsavory fellow. They say he runs women, does he? I couldn't sufficiently care. <laughs> Would you excuse me? <laughs> of course. Oh, good evening, Joan. Uh, Mrs. Stuart, Mrs. Pearson. Mrs. Pearson? Uh, Stuart's just joined us from South America. Oh. Uh, John, could I have a word with you when you have a moment? Oh, I ought to have mentioned it. Stuart's been asked to look into what's happened to Desmond. I'll uh, leave you two together. Oh, let me get you another drink, Mrs. Oh, thank you. Could I have a scotch and water? Uh, scotch and water, please. Uh, this must be awful for you. Uh, any idea where it could be? No, none whatever. Had he been sick or anything? No, Mr. Stuart, he hadn't been sick. Oh, thank you very much. Thank Shall we go over there, a little less crowded? Uh, just one thing I'd like to get clear, Miss Pearson. Did your husband take anything with him? Take anything? Uh, pack a bag. Oh, no, no, he didn't. Uh, excuse me, Joan, I forgot to ask. Why not have dinner with us tomorrow night to keep your mind off things? 
Well, that's very nice of you, Milos, but I'm afraid I can't manage it. Oh. Oh, uh, uh, this is Mr. Caldo, Mr. Stewart. How do you do? Mr. Caldo is a friend of the British community. Ah, you're new here. Have you been to Prague before? I've never had that pleasure. Wonderful. Paris has nothing on Prague, Mr. Stewart, for gaiety, for beauty. Joan, darling, there you are. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Will you excuse me? Oh, Charming woman. Such a pity about Desmond having this awful reputation. Huh? I mean, about the women. There's nothing to it, really, but uh, you've lived your life in embassies. You know how catty these people yes. can be. Huh? You were acquainted with him, were you? I like to think of the Pearsons as my good friends. What do you think happened? You see, I've been landed with this one. I've got to find him. The penalty of being the new boy, I suppose. All the dull jobs. Don't worry. If I know Desmond, he'll turn up again in a few days. He's disappeared before. I wonder sometimes if uh, there isn't more to Desmond's life than uh, meets the eye. Really? By the way, come around to my house tomorrow evening. I've got a little party on. I'm on duty the next morning, my first day. Well, then come early. Come in the afternoon. We'd all be swimming. Mm, well, uh, as long as I get away in good time. And no excuses. Do excuse me, Mr. Kelder, but I have someone I'd like Mr. Stewart to meet. By all means. Till tomorrow? Yes, indeed. Thanks so much. Terence, so glad you came. You certainly do yourselves very well out here. <laughs> Life is what you make it. You must not make the mistake of believing everything you hear about us. One moment, everybody. I want to introduce you to a new friend of ours. Terence Stewart. He's an important British diplomat. So be careful. Ira. What's the lady's name? Ira. She's great fun. Oh, really? She wants to know who is my handsome friend. Are you sure she's not just asking for a drink? Eh? <laughs> Perhaps so. You take it to her. Huh? All right. He's one of those reserved Englishmen, Ira. I'm Terry Stewart. And you? I'm Ira. Ira Frankel. Terry is trying to find out what happened to Desmond. Oh, dear. Isn't there any news yet? You knew him, then? Very well. I do hope he'll be all right. Well, aren't you coming in? You look as if you're ready for a day at the office. I, I didn't bring any shorts. I'll find you some. Oh, very nice. Uh, is this yours? Yes, thank you. Yeah. The water is marvelous. Splendid. Huh? Ah, it's too big. You are tall, but your waist is small. <laughs> uh, That's more like it. Yes, where do I change? Here. Yeah. Meet outside. Do you know many Englishmen? Oh, friends of Miller's. Desmond used to come here? Yes. He was full of life. Was? I didn't mean it that way. He must come back. Were you very fond of him? Hmm. His wife's very nice. You met her?
You know, it's funny. Every time I turn my back, my glass is empty. Ira, go and talk to Terence. But he's so dull, so English. No. Ira, my sweet, I heard that. So dull, so English, but I have my moments. <laughs> Didn't you know that there was a gypsy trying to break out of every English diplomat? <laughs> Come, a toast to the gypsy. It's on drink. Terence, you're a long way from the embassy. The ambassador is in bed by now. You're among friends. Hmm. Nazdravichko. Nazdravichko. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling better, Mr. Stewart? You had a good time. How long have I been here? Minutes? Hours? How long do you think? Who are you? I'll ask the questions, Mr. Stewart. Uh, can I get you something for your head? You'll find everything there except the keys for the car. You were very fortunate not to be injured. A miracle. I must ask you to remain, Mr. Stewart. You were very drunk. You have no right to hold me here. We are not holding you, Mr. Stewart. We are just inquiring. Then I shall have to assert my diplomatic privilege. Shall I call your ambassador for you? Don't you remember the car? What car? Your car. You have been responsible for a road accident that seriously injured a pedestrian. You're out of your mind. I wasn't driving. You were alone in the car. We have a witness. One of your men? The pedestrian is on the danger list. Where is he? In hospital. I'd like to see him. Uh, but first, I must ask you for a statement. Terence, I've just heard. This is terrible. Tell him. Tell him I didn't have much to drink. Now, don't worry. We're all with you. You know what he's trying to say? Perhaps your friend will be kind enough to leave, and then I can have your statement. Mr. Stewart has nothing to say yet. Mr. Stewart cannot leave until I have his statement. Terence, if anyone can help you, it's Milos. Do you see me drive away? We tried to stop you, but... Why did you try to stop him? Because he had forgotten something. What was it you forgot? Don't answer him. Prosim vas jeknete inspektorovi, abe ihinet propustil pana Stuarta. Pan Stuart on je z britskeho vyslanectví. Děkuji vám. Váš šef. Ano, prosím. Aha. Ano. Velmi dobře. You may go now. Mr. Stewart, I shall want to see you tomorrow. Don't you see that the moment the ambassador hears about this, I'll be out of the service. It was an accident anyway. Drink this, it would make you feel better. But they're bound to report it to the embassy. No, not bound. What about the statement? You haven't made one yet. Tomorrow is another day. By then I will have had time. Ira has some very important friends. One especially. 
But I'll have to tell the ambassador if, he, if he's going to find out later. No, 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 no. Not one word. That's enough. Your tea's upstairs. Bye-bye. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Stewart. Bye. Bye. And take your toys with you. You have children, Mr. Stewart? I uh, know. I, I don't think I could keep up with them somehow. <laughs> no. Please. How long have you lived here? Four years now. Two in this house. I help you to sugar. How do you go on for friends? Mostly the British community, I suppose. Oh, no. Desmond's a very good mixer. We've never been short of friends here. He wasn't in any kind of trouble, was he? Trouble? Well, I mean, it's easy enough for a Westerner to fall foul of the security police. Oh, I'm sure there was nothing like that. Desmond helped to bring a lot of trade to this country. Had he ever suggested that anyone was putting any kind of pressure on him? Just the usual business problems, nothing more. Any money troubles? Not really. Not really? Well, he did seem to be a bit worried about a year ago, but since then things have been much better. Who was this man, uh, Caldor, that you introduced me to last night? Why do you ask? Well, you, you didn't seem to like him very much. I don't. He's always trying to ingratiate himself. Known him long? About a year, perhaps a little more. Is he a particular friend of your husband's? Desmond used to see him sometimes. I know all about that girl. I'm sure he's not with her, if that's what you mean. I'm sorry. You don't have to be. It's no secret. All I do know is that Desmond's never been the same since he met her. In what way? Mr. Stewart, how much of what I tell you will get back to his firm? Not a thing, if you don't want it to. You see, there's been no one to turn to. Desmond's gone steadily downhill ever since he got in with that set. Caldo and the girl, Era, the rest of... Caldor's women. I don't think I've ever come across a more evil man. Desmond started staying out and drinking more than was good for him, and recently it's become impossible. In what way impossible? I think in diplomatic language you call it a nervous breakdown. Are you coming in for a swim? I have... Terry? No, not now. Come on, relax. Uh, have you had any more news? News? The, the police. Oh, don't worry. Uh, have you been on to them again? Just leave it with me. These things have a way of sorting themselves out. If it gets back to the ambassador, I shall be in very real trouble. Jerry's such a warrior. And so Pence, too. He needs a slim. All those hot clothes. You'll feel much better with them all. No, I, I can't stay. I must get back. That's awful embassy. What's the hurry? It's this Pearson business. Yes, well. I, I feel very sorry for his wife. He's got himself in an awful mess, it seems. Edda, would you be so kind as to get us a couple of drinks, please? Terry? Uh, thank you. Uh, an iced lemon would go down very well. Ah, oh, come on now. No, no, I, I'm due back at the embassy. Well, you know mine. Now. What's all this Joan Pearson has been telling you about Desmond? Oh, uh, no, it was in confidence. Well, I'm one of his very best friends. I don't think I should. I might be able to help. Tell me, did you notice, had he been drinking too much? Desmond? He liked his fun. Yes. Why, what does she say then? Oh, I wish I could be finished with this ridiculous job. We mustn't judge him, please, by her bourgeois standard. I didn't mean that. She said he'd had a breakdown. That would surprise me. If I were you, Terry, I don't think I'd report this. It might make you look a little ridiculous. But I have to report it back. If as a friend of Desmond's, I were to ask you. Thank you. Here I want you to be late for your appointment. Appointment? Run along and change. Oh. Oh, yes. Bye, Terry. See you. Bye, Ira. You know, this could cost Desmond his job. He's done a lot for that firm, not to speak of relations between our two countries. Oh, but none of this will get back to his company. Oh, you don't know Prague, Terry. Honestly, I'd rather you kept this to yourself. I can't do that. Why not? It's not my job to keep things from the embassy. Also, it's not my job to cover up your indiscretions. 
I mean, if you're going to be virtuous about this kind of thing. I see. Y you mean that one thing is dependent on the other? <laughs> no. Nothing of the kind, Terry. I like to protect my friends. I like to protect you. I like to protect Desmond. Now, you're going to help me, aren't you? So you know about his breakdown? As a matter of fact, I do. It was to me that he came. He's still about? But where is he? Ah. Are you asking as a friend or as a member of the embassy staff? I just want to finish with this job and get on to something interesting. Any idea what they've got lined up for you next? Depends on how I handle this, I suppose. Win or lose, there's not much in it for you, I suppose. Just more work? Uh, I know how little they pay you fellows. Mm. You know, Terry, you and I are made of the same stuff. East, west, what's the difference? In the end, we must look after ourselves. You certainly know what it's all about, don't you? You know, you and I should go into business. Business? Oh, come on. You know what I mean. I've got nothing to sell at the moment. No, I'm talking about a month, maybe uh, a year from now. In the meantime, I will be able to help you. Desmond, for instance. You know where he is, don't you? Yes, I know. I arranged for him to go away. But it's just about time for him to come back into circulation. I think perhaps, Terry, you better come with me. Just give me one moment to change, Miss. Yes. better today. I'm not feeling any better. Terry Stewart, from the British Embassy. Glad I found you. Terry's been given the job of finding out what's happened to you. It's all right. He's a friend of ours. He wants to do what he can to help. I've never seen you around the Embassy before. No, I'm new. I've just joined. And this is his first job. To find you. <laughs> oh, is it? This letter to my wife. You said you'd take it. You didn't. I'm sorry, Desmond. I see that she gets it. I still don't know why you brought him. Your wife asked the embassy to help. Help? Yes, she's um, frightened. But she's had four telegrams. Hasn't she? I wrote them myself. No one could know they were out from you. She knew. You should have left it to me. Desmond, you couldn't have written even your own name, and you know it. How much has he told you about what's happened to me? Uh, Milos didn't tell me. Who did then? Joan. Joan? Have you been around worrying her? No, oh, I told you. She came to us. Has she told anybody else? Not to my knowledge. She only told me in the strictest confidence. Well, if you're worried about any of this getting back to your firm, you can set your mind at rest. I'm worried about it getting back to your embassy. There are a lot of old women there. It won't even get back there, will it, Terry, eh? He's going to help. Really? Why? Well, he's been in a little spot of trouble, and we're doing what we can to help. And Milos is covering up for you, eh? In anticipation of future services? You too. Uh, report back on your disappearance in any way you think fit. Let's leave it at that, shall we? Well, any ideas, Desmond? You had all the time in the world to think. <laughs>
hope you don't mind my calling. It's a lovely surprise. Was that the famous Joseph Reddell I saw going out? Probably. Do you know him? I, I saw him at our embassy party. He's a very important minister. Is he a friend of yours? Yes. He... He gave me this. Oh. Oh, perhaps I shouldn't have come. Why not? This is my apartment, not his. Oh, yes, but in my job, I, I can't go around upsetting important ministers of the host country. You, you mean make Joseph jealous? Well, well, yes. It would do him good. Come on, you must have a drink. Oh, I don't know whether he'd like that either. In any case, I, uh, I don't want to spoil things for you and Desmond. Desmond? Yes, Milos took me to see him this afternoon. He told me all about it. About what? About... You and the minister. Joseph? Yes, and the arrangement that you and Desmond have about him. But Desmond doesn't even know him. Oh? Well, perhaps I'd better say no more. Look, what are you trying to say? He does talk, though, doesn't he? Desmond talk? No, your minister friend. Oh, yes, he talks about his wife all the time. You sure that's all? Not about his job? About cabinet policies? Look, Terry, I think you better go. I don't want to see you anymore. Maybe I was wrong. You were. Nothing lost. out right away. You found Desmond? I'll give you a hand with your stuff. He's all right, isn't he? He's in London. How can he be in London? He's been lying low, got himself into some trouble with the authorities here, but he's safely out now. Trouble? Political. The point is, they won't be keen on letting you and the children out when they realize he's not coming back, so we better move before they get any bright ideas. Political? Desmond? And let him tell you all about it when you're home. Oh, hello, you're early. Hello, Mr. Stewart. Hello. Peggy, Desmond. Now listen, I've got some news for you. We're going to London to see Daddy. On an aeroplane? Yes, this afternoon. Now I want you both to go upstairs, collect all your toys together, and I'll be out in a minute. Is it? Now please go. I'll just never understand why he didn't tell me. He couldn't. He didn't want to draw attention to you. Now may I get on to the embassy to book your flight and send a car for you? Come in. Where's Milos? You can make the street without any trouble. I've got a car down there. Where are we going? No time to waste. I wouldn't bring that bell if I were you. The room isn't wired. Let's go out there anyway. In two hours' time, Desmond, if you stay on here, your life won't be worth that much. What do you mean? In two hours' time, Desmond, your friends are going to be told that we know you're working for them. That's why you're coming back to London with me now. I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me, Desmond, how did you manage to get so much complex information out of that girl? She doesn't know her east from her west. Aren't you getting a bit out of your depth? We'll talk about my credentials on the way. I still have work to do here. Important work. Who for? Us or them? I've only got to call the ambassador. What's he got to do with it? You know I'm not working for the embassy any more than you are. You're coming home with me because you've gone over to their side. I don't know what you're getting at. You haven't been getting information from Reddell through ERA. You've been deliberately misleading us. It's no use calling your friends, Desmond. In two hours' time, they'll be your enemies. You've no alternative. Back home, you get ten years. But here, once they find out, we've rumbled you. You know them better than I do. 
They've got a wife and family here. Not anymore. They should be back in London by now. In London? Yes. Joan would never leave without me. She was told that you were there already. You told her? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Because when I got you out, she would have been in grave danger. But I can't get out of here. The moment I leave, they'll grab me. I'll look after that. Where's your jacket? In the wardrobe. Get it off. Milos, sir. Uh, I'm just going down for treatment. I won't be long. Oh, just one moment, Desmond. Now, don't be silly, Milos. Come back to your room. Come back to the room. to have a drink. It's part of the treatment. I know. There's a cafe there, for heaven's sake. It wouldn't take a minute. I'll wait till we get to the back roads. Vasha Povolani, prosim. He wants to see your driving license. Oh, yes. Uh, here we are. Ah, Anglitsky? Uh-huh. Yeah, well. yeah. Thank you very much, uh, indeed. Dobry den. Nadja? Dobry den, panowie. What are you having, Stuart? Nothing for me. 
Cognac, Prussy. He wants to see our passports. So you're at the British Embassy in Prague. You see, I speak English. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Will you please, uh, please, oh, watch Kate Bossy, was your police Then I can't was a little low checker. He wants us to hold on here till he gets through to his headquarters. Karel! What was there? Hello? Hello? Hello, I'm so tired. Yo, 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 Pochka. Time to go. Get the old boy to tell the policeman that we'll call in at police headquarters on our way. Jack that they move up in Namiel Starosti. He's staying here, put him in a policy. Yo, 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 check him. Taking the rotor arm. comes there.
river's the border. A couple of miles down here should bring us to it. All right? We'll have this. The key's in there. But ask the farmer to drive us to Vienna. Yes, you go and ask him. Spoko. Stay where you are. We both need a drink. Thank you. 